Well, uh, good afternoon and happy new year. Welcome to 2022. I'm not sure I've written that number down yet uh, on anything, but it'll happen soon enough. Uh, welcome to our county commission meeting, the first of uh, first of the year. We're pleased to have you here with us. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, it's been the tradition of this board that uh, we do a couple things as we start. One is going to be that uh, we're going to have our Pledge of Allegiance, but also we're going to have a prayer that's led by our chaplain, Chaplain Taylor. Happy New Year, Chap Chaplain Taylor. He'll come forward. This is a solemnizing prayer, which means that it's for the commissioners. It's not for the audience. Uh, what we do, we take very seriously and we look for wisdom uh, where we can get it. And so, Chaplain Taylor, if you'll come forward and, and lead us and we'll get started. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Lord, we thank you for the privilege to be here today. We thank for our county commissioners, dear Lord. We thank you for uh, this past year. You brought them through it, dear Lord. And we thank you for the wisdom you gave them this past year. We pray for new wisdom for them this new year in 2022. Pray you bless them, encourage their hearts, dear Lord, and guide and lead them, dear Lord. And this day we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Chaplain Taylor. We've got one item uh, that I know we need to add to the agenda came from uh, the EDC uh, to set a public hearing to uh, consider incentives for Project Rabbit. And uh, let's make that um, consent item AE. So are there any other additions or deletions? Commissioners, anyone? All right, then motion to approve the agenda is amended. So All right, second. second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Um, and then, all right, uh, we have the minutes of December 6th, motion and a second to approve the minutes of December 6th. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion to approve the consent agenda as amended. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, do we have anyone for public comment? No, okay. Well, then we will move right into uh, item number three, quasi-judicial hearing for SUP 01-22. And these have a short speech that I'm required to read. Uh, if you're going to testify on this in any way, please come forward and be sworn in. Uh, the hearing for consideration of SUP 01-22 uh, is now in session and will focus on an application submitted by Russell Wolf and Daniel Soroka to construct a residential storage facility on tax parcel 614132 located in Water's Edge. If you feel that any member of the board may have a conflict of interest in hearing the case, please address the board now prior to any testimony or information being presented. When the board enters into deliberations to decide the case, no further testimonies may be presented. The board will render one of the following three conditions. will approve the permit as requested or with additional conditions. will continue the request or deny the request. All parties who plan to testify in this case may come forward and be, be sworn in. Those to testify must state their name and address at the podium for the benefit of the board's clerk. All material presented must be given to the clerk and would become part of the record. This board can only accept sworn testimony. No hearsay evidence is admissible. Uh, welcome, Aaron. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is Aaron Poplin uh, for the County 402 North Main Street. So we have a quasi-judicial hearing for SUP 0122. Let's see if I can get this full screen.
There we go. <clears throat> There's SUP 0122, a request from Russell Wolf and Daniel Danielle Soroka for a 2,400 square foot residential store facility on their property in Water's Edge subdivision off of Deer Lake Run, uh, which is parcel 614-132. So this parcel is located off of Deer Lake Run inside of Water's Edge subdivision, which is an RS zone subdivision along High Rock Lake. The owner of the property lives just catty corner of the uh, property in question here at 240 Deer Lake Run. And they're looking to put a 2,400 square foot residential storage facility for a boathouse. And in the Water's Edge subdivision, it's pretty common for the non lake front properties to have boat houses for people who have properties on the lake itself. So if we take a look at this particular lot, we'll see that both sides, uh, either side of it are currently vacant lots here. And if you look just to the north there, there's the first of some of the boat houses that, that go along those non lakefront properties. And then two lots south there is a house. And the property itself is uh, two thirds of an acre. So what's being proposed here is a 2,400 square foot uh, residential storage facility. It's located towards the rear of the lot here. And it'd be used for personal storage and for storage of their boat. Uh, the specific requirements for a residential storage facility are that the parcels in fee and simple ownership, which it currently is, that the maximum size is 3,000 square feet and they're looking to do a 2,400 square foot. And I'd like to point out that we do allow residential storage facilities as permitted by right use, but that's only if the if the uh, property or the building itself is three percent of the lot size or less. So in this particular instance, that would be at about eight hundred and seventy five square feet. And since they're looking to go over that to twenty four hundred square feet, we would have to go through the special use permit process, which is what we're doing right now. Uh, and then the next requirement is that no outdoor storage is allowed except for as specifically provided and none is proposed. The minimum lot size should be the same as a single family residence. And this is slightly larger than the 20,000 square foot minimum lot size. Uh, the storage of vehicles shall not be in the front yard. There's none proposed. That outside lighting shall be de uh, designed to prevent direct glare on adjoining residences. There's none proposed. And that the setbacks shall be the same as a single family dwelling. And this does comply with the RS setbacks of 50 foot front. 10 foot side and 20 foot rear. And then the special use criteria are that adequate transportation exists to the site, that the use will not significantly detract from the character of the surrounding area, that hazardous safety conditions will not result, the use will not generate uh, specific noise, odor, glare, or dust, excessive traffic will not, <clears throat> or parking problems will not result, and that the use will not create a significant visual impact for adjoining properties or passerbys. So after conducting the quasi-judicial hearing, we'll need to make three separate motions to adopt findings of fact. Uh, example findings have been provided to you today. And then a motion to approve, deny, or table the SUP for the 2,400 square foot residential storage facility on parcel 614-132. And then if you have any specific questions, both me and the applicant are here today. Good. Um, does the uh, development that he lives in or that this is in, do they have uh, covenants that will allow him to have 2,400 square feet? Yes. So we actually, I'm not sure exactly the complete covenants that they have in the neighborhood, but they do have covenants. Uh, we had a, a similar application back in 2018 in this uh, neighborhood that had a 2,400, that was also 2,400 square feet that went through this board and has since been built in the neighborhood. So there weren't any neighbors that objected? Uh, not that I recall back then. So oh, now. <laughs> <laughs> I have gotten some calls uh, about this one today, but we can't, I can't go specifically on what they said since that would be hearsay. Do you remember just offhand, Aaron, if it was positive or negative? 
the general consensus that I was getting was that uh, that they had some issues with the materials of the building, but not the use itself. So, no, no, no you go ahead. Uh, if there's objection to the materials, uh, does that mean it's going to be uh, a steel building? I believe it's going to be a metal building, but the owner could could answer better. Okay, thanks. And are there any, uh, is there an HOA out there? There is. And was your meeting held with the HOA concerning this building? I was informed that he's uh, <clears throat> applied to the architectural review committee for the specific building. And what was the result? It looks like uh, they sent me, I got an email discussing it, and it looks like they had some things that need to be changed on the actual current design before that they would approve it. Okay, so we don't have an HOA approval, but yet it's in front of us for a special use permit? Mm -hmm. So this would be, it's kind of, you would have to get both approvals to build the structure out there. So if it's approved today through the special use permit process, they would still need to go through the covenant approval in the neighborhood before they could build the structure itself. Would it not be more prudent to have that done first and then bring it to us? Mm. I'm not really sure if, there, if there's a, if it's better to do one or the other since they both do need to be done. So we don't have an ordinance that said it has to go in that order? Right, because we don't actually enforce uh, restrictive covenants at the county level. Those are privately enforced by the HOA themselves. So what we're looking at is the actual county ordinance and we're doing the county process here. But it seems a, like a waste of time to me if, they do not meet the local covenants where they are, either in the size of the building or any material use on the building. Mm -hmm. uh, so I agree with Craig that. I think, well, I think you guys make a good point, but today it's already here. So maybe in the future we could say we want approval. Oh, yeah. I'm not suggesting that we do anything other than our yeah. duty today. Right. Yeah. Well, so let me, let me, I do have some questions as well, but let me kind of shed a little um, because I've, I have spoken with some folks. It does have to be approved in both places and whether, even if we approve this, doesn't mean the building goes up. Um, the only reason, and this was a question that I had, why is this coming in front of us is because um, the, the maximum size that would be allowed based on our rules would have been 875 square feet because there's not mm -hmm. a residence there. Only 3% could have been built upon. So that's the, correct. The question here for us isn't any of the other stuff. The question here for us is, uh, will we approve a 2,400 square foot building? Um, mm -hmm. I did ask folks in water's edge, do you have any problem with a 2,400 square foot building? And they said, zero, none, that's fine. So the, the issue that's before us is the 2,400 feet and they don't have an issue with that. Um, I have a couple of questions just about the sketch here that I'll get to, but us approving the 2,400 square feet, I, I'm actually okay with because from a legal standpoint, he'll have to comply from a construction uh, material standpoint with the association once he takes our approval there. If he doesn't comply with that, he can't build the building. And so um, we can't cite, my understanding is, we can't cite homeowners association rules in our decision whether to approve or not approve. Is that right? Right, because we're looking at the... Uh looking in the context of our ordinance and our land use plans. That's, that's right. So we'll do our part and then the association has legal remedy mm -hmm. to do their part. 
So the questions that I the, the the question that I have is the the only sketch that we have here is um is this and I'm uh, you did mention that it would meet setbacks which it would have to uh, by the rules so we've got 20 feet on one side um, and I can't really tell is it 10, 10 feet, feet on the other, other side yes. So my question is, um, it, it really doesn't indicate on here, will this be front load, back load, side load, front load? Okay, because you got no room on sides, right? So this will be front load. Yeah, yeah, sure, they'll, yeah. Um, Aaron, is that okay? Okay. My name is Russell Wolf. I live at 240 Deer Lake Run in Salisbury, North Carolina. Um, I don't know who I hand this to. Uh, uh, give it to Craig here. <clears throat> yes. I took pictures of the other buildings in the neighborhood also, in case you guys are interested to see what, compare what I'm building to their building. Is it's this gonna have the third door on it? It's just gonna only have two doors. Is this actually gonna be a, is this actually gonna be a Morton building? No, sir. Okay. Oh, a what? That's the picture, it's a Morton. Yeah, it's a Morton building picture. It's the closest one I could come because I wanted to um, do a two-tone and whatnot. Old building. But it's not a, it's not gonna be a Morton building. No. <clears throat> I'm going to build it personally. Can you tell us what exactly your neighbors are objecting to as far as materials? We haven't um we haven't uh come to terms on that right right now. Um, there was a bunch of issues in the home HOA, which I don't know what you guys want to get into that today. Uh, but uh, I did all my paperwork, filed everything. There's nowhere in the bylaws that says that. What I can or can't build, it's all up to the homeowners association. Um, if they disagree with you, you can do a petition, which I did. And out of a, um, out of seventy homes I stopped by, I got fifty signatures saying they don't care what I build out there as long as it looks like the building I've showed you. Um, the rest of the ones that I didn't talk to were either on the board or they weren't home, and I couldn't talk to. There's only four people in the whole neighborhood who said they wouldn't sign it. There's only one person in the neighborhood said they didn't like the building. Um, and everybody else, my immediate neighbor, um, Butch Julian, uh, Freddie, don't know his last name. They said it would be the best looking building in the neighborhood, along with the other 50 people. Uh, I'm not trying to build anything that looks like a workshop, you know, or like an industrial building or anything like that. That's why I'm just taking extra time and the money to put the, um, the cupolas on it have the windows in the doors, um, have windows in the building itself with shutters, two-toned it, gonna have over a foot overhang on it with gutters. I'm gonna build, hopefully, if, it, if I can allow it, build a, um, around the corner of it so we have a little porch out there, um, get out of the sun if we're hanging out there. Um, but no, so far, I mean, I've done everything and that my, I possibly can to follow the rules and guidelines and I'm just waiting to actually get a, another meeting with them so we can sit down and discuss it again. One more question. So then all the vehicles that we have seen on the photos, those are all be inside then? Yes, ma'am. That's one of the reasons why I want to get it. I have literally, my stuff has been storage for over a year. It cost me $300 a month. I have um, cars and motorcycles I haven't seen in a year um, because of this. I'm just trying to get my stuff across the street instead of in Lexington. With a nice building. <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading some. How long have you lived here? I've lived um, for about a year and a half at Salisbury. I've lived in Charlotte for 20 years. Moved down here 30 years ago. Salisbury was the first place I moved to when I came down here in 1989. I've been here pretty much ever since. Not Salisbury, but back and forth. I have family that lives around here. Okay. So I'm still from up north, but I've been here for 30 years. Oh. <laughs> 
Oh, you're saying you had your stuff in Lexington, so I didn't know if you moved from Lexington. Excuse me? Did you move from Lexington to here? No, from Charlotte. I, I just found a um, storage unit in Lexington. That was the only place that I could find that had the big enough storage units. Well, thanks for moving here. Thanks for moving here. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Uh, the town's great. Um, I really enjoy it out here. I really do. It's much better than Charlotte. Charlotte's a crazy town, and I was glad to be out of Charlotte. Well, uh, based on the information that I received from some of these folks, no, again, no one had uh, any problem with the size of the building. Have to meet setback. Um, have to. I'll work it out with Bridge. Um, yes, sir. We all think. I think we need to do our part. Okay. Uh, did there's the statements. All right, so well, we'll need to have um, so any any more questions for the applicant? Okay. All right. All right thank, thank you. you. Uh, we will have a public hearing. Is is there anyone that would like to speak about this? All right, hearing none, we'll close that. And um, Jim, do you have? <clears throat> yes, the uh, findings of fact to approve the request and make a motion that the development of the property in accordance with the proposed conditions will not materially endanger the public health or safety. In fact, this request complies with all seven specific requirements identified in section 21-56 10 for residential storage facilities. In fact, the proposed structure is subject to compliance with applicable building code standards. Three of them? No, it's one. No. Just the first one. one. First one. All right, do we have a motion to uh, approve that? So moved. Or adopt it, I'm sorry. All in favor say aye. 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 That the development of the property in accordance with the proposed conditions will not substantially injure the value of adjoining or abutting property or that the development is a public uh, necessity and fact that no material evidence was presented suggesting this request would injure property values all right uh, all right second we have a second all in favor say aye aye and the third is the motion is that the location and character of the development in accordance with the proposed conditions will be in general harmony with the area in which it is located and in general conformity with any adopted county plans. And the fact is that the proposed building will be made of similar materials to other storage buildings in the county. So moved. Right. <clears throat> yeah, I got a question about that one, Aaron. Are we... This building will be made of similar materials to other storage buildings in the county. Is that relevant? That's generally <clears throat> what we have, uh, what we find for our fact here in that third fact. The last couple of storage buildings have had the similar, had the same language in it. Yeah, but I think the main issue uh, here is the construction of the building and so we're not approving this because mm -hmm. it well we you see what i'm asking you mm -hmm. I'm, I'm we're using this as a finding of fact that says it'll be made of similar materials to other storage buildings in the county mm -hmm. and that's not what we're talking about here we're talking about um that it comply with the hoa yeah not a mm -hmm. not a not a tobacco barn made out mm. of uh, lap siding. I, I th you I'm, could I don't potentially know change that then to a would be of a similar use to other store, uh, personal storage buildings in the county. I, I think in the mm -hmm. county is the question. We need to tie it to the HOA. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying, Shane? Yeah. 
Or we can go with two. Mm -hmm. um, do we have a motion to, well, we can just not adopt number or do we have to vote it down? But wouldn't we just make a motion to accept the amended a motion? Well, we've adopted two. We could just adopt two. We didn't adopt the third. Do okay. we need to adopt a third? No? Okay. All right. So we've Okay. So we've adopted two. So all right. So we have officially adopted two. Having done that, then I make a motion to uh, um to accept SUP 01 22. Uh, I, have, I have one more question. So, this won't be used for business. Okay, it's just personal. Okay, because if it's business, that's a whole other animal, right? That's correct. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Aaron. All right, we got another one uh, with Shane, quasi-judicial hearing for SUP 01-18 for Selco Partnership. Uh, Jay, do I need to read that again? Okay. Yes. Uh, the hearing for consideration, uh, if, if there's anyone here that needs to be sworn in, come on, come on up. Hearing for consideration of amending SUP 01-18 is now in session and will focus on the application submitted on behalf of Selco Partnership to construct 165 foot wireless support structure on tax parcel 422179 located at 280 Reimer Road. If you feel that any member of the board may have a conflict of interest in hearing the case, please address the board now prior to any testimony uh, or information being presented when the board enters into deliberations to decide the case, no further testimony may be presented. The board will render one of the following three decisions. One, approve the permit as requested or with additional conditions. Two, continue the request or three, deny the request. All parties who plan to testify in this case may come forward and be sworn in. Those who testify must state their name and address at the podium for the benefit of the board's clerk. All material presented must be given to the, to the clerk and will become part of the record. Board can only accept sworn testimony. No hearsay evidence is admissible. Shane, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Shane Stewart, Rowan County Planning Office, 402 North Main, Salisbury. So as the chairman read in the <clears throat> opening statement there, this is a special use permit request for a uh, application from Selco Partnership, DBA Verizon Wireless. And about four years ago, this request for a similar tower, almost identical, I believe, was approved um, March of 18. But as you know, we've had a few of those in the past where they expire after two years if no construction permits were issued. So I won't go through this exhaustively. I just want to hit a few highlights. There's all the information in your packet and the reference of how it complies with the various sections and staff's opinion on the ordinance. And then uh, there's one person sworn in so they can provide that testimony there. The um, clerk did pass out some example findings. Just kind of jump ahead. You'll see in uh, number two that there's a reference to testimony given. That was somewhat assumption, but it was also maybe something that we can reference to the previous hearing in 18. So just wanted to set the, the ground uh, stages for those few references there. Real quick, the location here, we're southwest of Faith in this um, property here at the Parks and Rhymer Road, um, change in road name there. But one of the things with the tower applications they first start with is there typically some type of an identified coverage or uh, some type of a, a gap for their customers. And <clears throat> from that point, they provide what's termed a search ring. This one here is not, as you see, it's oval shape, but it's about a mile uh, search ring. And then from there, per the ordinance, the next thing they have to do is look through what um, available towers could be within that area to co-locate on. In this case, there are none. There's also no alternative structures, which are like water towers or any tall feature that could uh, accommodate an antenna and what we term preferred sites, which are public property, semi-public property too, that they could locate on. So from 18 into current, I didn't see any change 
There was none then, and I do not see from GIS none today. So focusing on the property that was selected here, the Craddock Moore property, <clears throat> it's about 24 acres. This is from February, March of 21. You can see it's a wooded site. There's a little stem back here to the intersection of Parks and Rymer. Okay. So from that intersection, there would be a proposed easement to provide access to the 100 by 100 lease area which is represented here and tower in the center. There's the fenced compound for all the, the future equipment in addition to the proposed antenna for Verizon here. So 165 foot monopole tower, it's got a four foot lightning rod on the top and it will accommodate per the design for additional carriers if you know, they're able to have interest there for those. But all those are ordinance requirements. We want to make reference to the fall zone, this little dash line. It will be designed, although there's not an identified tower design yet, but it will have that certification that it falls within the lease area, which is 50 feet. And that's a condition of approval, too, that was provided in 18, and I would encourage the board to keep that, too. The pictures really don't do a lot of justice. We'll get into the simulations, which are more important, but from the intersection at your back, looking into the existing driveway, this is the site. And the Menken residence at 170 would be to the right of that drive, and to the left is the Craddock Moore residence at 725 Parks Road. And then to the back side is the intersection here for the continuation of Parks Road. More importantly is the photo simulations as required by the ordinance. In each one of these, you'll have a picture location and reference of the direction uh, for all aspects. The ordinance requires a photo to be taken in the four directionals to the nearest public road, and then a simulation of what one might see uh, when the tower is constructed. And some of these they'll have a reference to no visibility or you know what is identified in this case here it's very, very obscure but keep in mind it's only one vantage point in one direction each time. So in this case here um, at the uh, Rymer Parks Road looking directly due north to the site it doesn't appear visible at least in the current tree coverage, this was taken in 17. It doesn't look any different that I can tell on the current aerial photos, but of course there is foliage on the trees too. And again, you see the movement here. So this is coming back to Castor Road looking due west. Doesn't appear visible, noted by the reference here. Same for the north side looking south on Mount Hope Church. There's a small um, view here, not visible back to the intersection, Mount Hope Church near Parks Road. Minimal visibility here. The best view is at that intersection look directly over. Um, Obviously, you got private properties going to have different aspects, and the tower will be visible from those sites, but you're trying to take from the ordinance perspective, uh, they've achieved that with these directionals, but this, again, is the best view there. Um, as with any new tower, we have a consultant that the applicant pays for their review services, and it's reimbursed the county once they've concluded their review. Cityscape, we've been contracting with them for, I think, over 10 years. So they reviewed it also back in 18, same conclusions today, that it meets all the county standards and they support the need for that based on the applications information. That's in your packet. Really nothing to go over for the land use plan. There's no specific recommendations here. And just like the previous request, three motions for findings, I've got the the example hand out there, and then last a motion for the request. So also hopefully helpful, this is what we usually follow up after the board does their part, we follow up and work with the chairman to have that uh, signature, and this is what's termed the certificate approval. It'll have the conditions they've got to adhere to, the findings, 
And I believe with the reference there on point two, you probably want to make a modification there to previous testimony from Mr. Berkowitz on property impact assessment. And these are the same five conditions of approval from their previous request. <clears throat> um, of course, the applicant's attorney is online, Josh Rotenstrike, and um, he'll be sharing on behalf of the application and then the one sworn individual here present. Any questions of the board? I do have one question. Um, do you know the elevation of the point where they're going to uh, erect the monopole? Should be approximately 876. Okay. Um, I've talked to citizens out there that just really have a hard time getting cell signal. So I, you know, is it just that blue dash that's going to be covered or is that going to go further out? As far as the coverage area would go beyond that, I mean, I would defer to the experts, but it would go more than that mile. That is, again, the search ring is, here's an area that we've got a problem and it may be, that's the optimal center. And then once that tower is built. And the other thing too, <clears throat> I mean, the ordinance allows them to go to 199. So they have it identified that 165 is all they're asking for. So a lot that goes into that you know, beyond me. Yeah, me too. And, and Mr. Stewart, I don't know, this is attorney Josh Rotenstrike. I'm happy to address some of these questions if the board would like me to, or I can, I, I wasn't exactly sure when to hop in. Once the chairman recognizes you, then um, if they have no more questions for me, then I guess you'll be next. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Or if we need any broadband out there. There's space for it, right? Be the only place in the county that didn't have a need for it. All right. Um, yeah, if council would like to address some issues, that's fine. Uh, yes, yeah, good afternoon, members of the board. This is uh, attorney Josh Rodenstrike. Um, I, I don't know if my video is working, but that's a picture of my father. So please disregard that. He's a, a partner in my law firm as well. Um, but, uh, Happy New Year to you all. Um, as staff indicated, this is our request for a conditional use permit on behalf of Baker Donaldson, representative of Verizon Wireless. And quite honestly, Mr. Stewart did a fantastic job of laying out everything. Um, and as he indicated back in 2018, my predecessor did present this application to this board and it was approved at that time. And quite honestly, not much of anything has changed. Unfortunately, um, we were unable or Verizon was unable to construct or begin the next steps with constructing the tower. Um, and therefore we're here for what would essentially be a renewal of um, this application. Um, to answer some questions and I can get into a, a few more things. Um, the, the purpose of this tower, as, as clearly it's noted, is to fill a significant gap in coverage and improve capacity um, southwest of Faith and then mainly west of Faith Road, north of Highway 152 East and then east of Old Concord Road. Um, I know that may be hard to, uh, for me not being from the area. I'm not exactly sure that area, I mean, how that lays out or what that means to you all, but those are the kind of the, the main um, points of reference that I was given with regard to the coverage that we are filling. There's also these towers create what we call a capacity offload. Um, and, and the best way I know to explain that is that when a tower uh, is erected and, and being used, it has the ability to have X amount of users um, and cell phones being attached to that tower and when you have a tower that's nearby the main tower when your tower or the most tower most near you is um, being used in excess you you actually ping a tower that's further away and so while this area we know there is a significant gap in coverage it also will act as a capacity capacity offload tower for the existing Verizon Tower, which um, is at the granite site, which is about approximately three and a half miles northwest of this particular site, which we understand has a lot of um, service issues as well, simply because of the um, capacity or the overcapacity use of that specific tower, which again, I don't know if the board is familiar with that tower or um, uh, that, that area um, either. 
But uh, as staff indicated, this is our request for 165 foot mono pole tower. Um, we do believe we have met, uh, and I can represent, have met uh, to the board, met all requirements under the ordinance and would request approval. Um, because this board has already heard that, I, I intended to be brief unless you want to hear more from me. I also have with me Jeremy Holt, um, who can testify, uh, an expert and with, from Chase Real Estate, who can answer any questions with regard to the selection of this site um, as a site acquisitionist um, and any other questions that we may he may be able to answer uh, with regard to how this site or why this site was chosen and would also move into evidence the entire application uh, along with the diagrams, charts, um, and uh, uh, other materials contained therein. All right, thank you. I any questions for the attorney? What, what year was this approved? 2018. Yeah, March of 2018, um, and, and I, I anticipated someone asking why the heck this didn't go forward, and I, I, I truthfully don't have an answer. Um, I've done a lot of these tower uh, approvals across the state, and as you can imagine, I think they're happening fairly regularly across the country and potentially <clears throat> across the world, and um, once we get them approved, it's turned over to Verizon to then work on the next step, which does take some time, um, and in this case, my guess would also be COVID had some interference with that, but but took too long. All right. Uh, any other questions? All right, well, thank you. If not, uh, we'll open up the floor and have uh, some public input. Is there anyone that would like to speak? Michael uh, Taylor. 2675 Hanover Church Road. I just wonder, I uh, have Verizon. I, I wonder if this is going to help us up the old Concord Salisbury Road from Boston Heights up towards Salisbury because I get calls dropped all the time in the area. And I just wonder if that was going to help us any. I don't, I don't oppose the tower. I just wonder if it's going to help us because I don't know where anybody else is like me, but my, my phone it happens to me all the time. And my wife thinks that I don't want to talk to her. <laughs> Um, I, I would I would defer to Mr. Holt to answer the best he can, but I don't know that he has the knowledge uh, with the surrounding areas of, of how far this tower reach or specifically with where that you know that area is. Um, Mr. Holt, if you're available to to speak on that, um, I know you did look into uh, another. Um, Mr. Stewart had let us know that there was a, an area near a park that the county had constantly been inquiring with Verizon and could not get a response. And I know Mr. Holt did reach out to Verizon's representative. Um, uh, hasn't got a response yet, but is looking into that specific area. I don't know if that's this area or not, Mr. Holt. What park was that, Shane and Nicholas? My name is Jeremy Holt with Chase Real Estate Services on behalf of Verizon Wireless. Um, I live at 13808 Sunrise View Drive in Charlotte. Um, as far as reference to the question that was asked, I'm not sure that would be, uh, I would have to have a propagation map that would see uh, the location that he's talking about compared to the, where the tower is going to go. And unfortunately, I don't have that. We'll, we'll check it out, um, Mr. Taylor. I think he's just hanging up on his wife personally. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, does Verizon have any additional plans soon in the future to uh, perhaps cover our county better? Um, we've worked several sites in the county. It's just a matter of that they have a different bill plan, um, different locations, and it just depends on when construction will release. So they give us, I've worked in this county quite a bit. It's just a matter of working with landowners that are going to work with us to be able to get a lease in place and meet your ordinance and making sure that we can comply with everything and move to the next step. All right, thanks. All right, so let's uh, go to work on the findings of fact. We'll have three of them. We'll vote on them individually, Mike. Mr. Chairman, we need to close the public hearing. Uh, we'll close public hearing. There you go. <clears throat> Mike, thanks. I move the development of the property in accordance with the proposed conditions will not materially endanger the public health or safety. Fact based upon plans submitted and established conditions of approval, the proposed tower will comply with all applicable federal, state, and local regulations. 
In fact, it in the unlikeliness in the unlikely event of a tower failure, the structural <clears throat> will be certified by a North Carolina professional engineer to fall within the leased area prior to the issuance of a zoning permit. In fact, the proposed tower will provide the means for Verizon Wireless to address documented coverage and capacity deficiencies <clears throat> uh, and co-location opportunities for future telecommunication providers and, and industrial recognized by public necessity. All right, that's Second. motion. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 I move that the development of the property in accordance with the proposed conditions will not substantially in, uh, injure the value of the adjoining or abutting property or that the development is a public necessity. In fact, the state certified general appraiser, Michael Berkowitz, provided testimony summarizing statements from, <clears throat> from his impact study, which concluded that the proposed towers will not substantially injure the value or uh, adjacent properties, and that it is, it is located in the area where it does not substantially detect from the autistic and neighborhood character. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. I mean, the location and character of the development in accordance with the proposed conditions will be in general harmony with the area in which it is located and in general conformity and any uh, adopted county plans. Fact as evidence from the balloon test and photo, photo simulation, the proposed tower would primarily be visible along Rhymer Road and two small sections along Mount Hope Church Road. Fact, according to staff reports, uh, monopole towers less than 199 feet in height are permitted in 98% of county zoning jurisdictions, subject to a conditional use permit a process that uh, assumes the use is in general compliance with surrounding properties. In fact, wireless towers do not generate significant level of noise, odor, glare, or dust. In fact, the request complies with all specific conditions, conditional use requirements in section 2164-4 of, of the zoning ordinance. Second. Whoever say aye. Aye. Do we have a motion to approve SUP 01-18? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, guys. We've just got um, at our litter report, a year-end litter report, just to let citizens know about what we've been picking up on the side of the road. Run County has 2,498 shoulder miles of roadway and during the 21 calendar year, our uh, locally taxpayer funded Department of Environment, Environmental Management removed approximately 117 tons of litter and roadside debris. So, um, in the first quarter, it was about 38 tons, second quarter, 32, third quarter, 16, and then the fourth quarter, uh, again, 30 tons. So I tell you, I, I, well, I don't think I've told you all this story, but I was uh, sitting over in a parking lot in downtown Salisbury. We were meeting some people. I often wonder how some of these parking lots and you just see fast food garbage sitting in them. And right across from us, this guy opened his door and just put all of his garbage right out on the ground. And I thought I'd never actually seen it in person. So I honked at him, put his window down, looked at me and I screamed at him to pick his garbage up. And he let me know that it was now my garbage. It wasn't his responsibility. So uh, it was pretty bold. As my wife is screaming at me, put the window up, put the window up. <laughs> so, um, man, just, uh, oof. Well, Mr. Chairman, I'm really glad that you did uh, tell him to pick his garbage up. Yeah, well, it didn't help any. Well, and then, but, but it is all of our responsibility as citizens. So we actually, I did what he asked me to do. Yeah. I got out of my car and went over and picked up his garbage and uh, took it over to Big Lots and threw it away from him which is enough to make you mad again that um, 
I'm picking up his garbage because uh, he felt he was too good to do so. So well, and, and I understand that, but as a citizen who started learning that litter was part of my responsibility as a member of the community when I was only nine, um, we all need to do our part. And whether it's your garbage or not, if you see it, pick it up, throw it away. All right. Um, next, we've got um, finance, bu budget amendment. So commissioners, a motion to approve budget amendments. I move. Thank you. All right. All in favor say aye. Aye. I have some board appointments <coughs> to go through. Rowan EDC, uh, there are three seats currently to be filled. One of, uh, for two of them, uh, Greg Anderson and Tim Proper have reapplied. And then uh, Dr. Watlington uh, has been asked by the EDC to fill uh, the position of, uh, I thought it, initially I thought it was Lynn Moody, but Derry Caldwell took Lynn Moody's seat, I think, when Lynn left. So this, uh, and then uh, Darius stepped away. So they have asked that a representative from the school system be on that. So do we have a motion to approve Greg Anderson, so Tim Proper, and Tony Watlington? Second. All, right, all in favor say aye. 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 South Salisbury Fire Department Fire Commissioners, uh, Chief Jason Burnett um, has again asked that Judy Barnhart and Wayne Taylor um, be reappointed We've, uh, we've waived uh, terms for them before. So do we have a, mo a motion to waive the, uh, the limit on terms for them? So moved. Second. In favor say aye. 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 Then do we have a motion to appoint Judy Barnhart and Wayne Taylor? So Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All right, I move that the board now enter into closed session in accordance with North Carolina General Statute 143-318-11A1 to consider approval of the minutes of the closed session that we held on October 18th in accordance with General Statute 143-318-11A3 for attorney-client privilege regarding lease negotiations. Mr. Chairman, there was another application for board appointments. Did I miss it? Yes. There's a third seat. All right, Craig, thanks for. Justin Belk applied to fill a vacant seat. And so motion to approve Justin Belk. So move. Thanks. Never say aye. aye. Sorry about that. No problem. All right, so my motion stands. Do we have a second? All in favor say aye. 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 We'll get started as soon as we've cleared out. All right, we're back. Uh, motion to come out of closed session. So move. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Motion to adjourn. So move. All in favor. Need to approve the minutes. We have the EDC. Already did. That was on consent. Consent. Oh, what? Yeah. Why did you put it? We didn't. He put it on AE. Put it on AE on the consent agenda. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was on current. Aye. 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 A